Hello everyone. So, I have to redo this drawing for you guys, which is perfectly fine. Um, so what we are working on is we're working on this dog portrait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you guys how to sketch out the general head. And in class, what we got to is we worked up to some of the fur here. So we have most of the fur done on the face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of give you guys a rundown of the materials I am using real quick. Okay. So I'm using a group of different types of pencils. I have graphite, but we're going to work mostly with charcoal. So be sure to, um, if you're not going to be using charcoal pencils, it's fine. Just work and um, try to get a range of pencils with the darkest value. And what you're going to do is you're going to gather all the different types of pencils you have get either a spare piece of paper or even little strips of paper so you can either practice things on with it as well as kind of just get a general idea of your value scale and what you have to work with your darkest of darks your lightest of dark uh, lightest of lights and just kind of take the time to really develop all of those things what I'm also using is a kneadable eraser. This is a little bit dry, so it's not as soft to work with, but that's okay. It gets the job done. You can actually uh, mold it to what you need to get a fine detail erase out of it. So be sure to try to get your hands on these erasers. These really help, and it also slowly picks up layers so if you don't want to erase too much these are really really great you also want to be able to have a normal hard eraser so if you want that harsh line pickup um, within your sketching and stuff this is really good to have also another thing that I like to have this is called a chamois it's basically a soft cloth, and as you can see, it's kind of making my hands pigmented. So what it does is it helps spread a tone on the paper. Um, kind of similar to here, this has a toned background. The person probably used, uh, most people would just use a toned gray paper, and that way the light, um, they could use a white to make it way more vibrant, uh, vibrant which is what you can do as well. If you do not like dirty hands for dirty surfaces, make sure you have wipes on hand. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of wipes you have, but you want to try to make sure that your hands are as clean as possible. You don't want it to smudge because what will happen is the oils on your hands, especially if you use a lot of lotion, the oils on your hand is going to stain your surface that you're working on and you do not want that it will not make it clean it will make it look really weird and gross and even covering it is not going to do it you won't really be able to cover it very well to where your portrait or whatever drawing you're working on is going to look decent I also have these. This is called a blending stump, and these are called tortillons. These are to help blend and to get a more flawless blend to what we are working on. So if you guys do not have these, be sure to carry Q-tips on you. So with that being said, as I am here, we are only going to work for an hour. We're going to stop right where the drawing that we worked on during the zoom meeting has stopped so I'm t what we are going to do is there's a couple different ways that you guys can draw there is the gridding method where you do a lot of measurements you kind of measure out the general vicinity of your um, reference surface and what you do is you grid it out and then you grid the paper the exact same way with similar measurements it's a lot of math I can't do math. So what I do is if you have been in my drawing class before, we worked on negative and positive space. The reason why we worked on this is because when I look at this image, I see a general outline of the image first. So I go with what the general outline is. I don't look 
at, oh, I need to draw the eye like this and draw the eye like that first. I look at, all right, I need to make sure this whole image is placed on my drawing surface, just the similar silhouette of the actual image that I am looking at. So what I'm going to do is I start at the snout right here and I try to find a place somewhere on my page that I feel like I want to work with. Now, when I'm holding the pencil, this is at a good length for me to hold it at the edge right here, so that way I get great movements and swift movements. The reason for this is because we are doing tons of sketching. We are not taking the time to, this limits how you draw. You wanna have full capabilities to send something a little bit loose. The whole point of getting just something down, this is the same with painting, if you guys are painting. Um, and you're doing a wash background uh, with either like burnt umber and some Gamsol if you're using oil paint or even acrylic paint. Uh, you water it down and you have to make it loose because you are going to cover it up. We are covering up this image with the pastel, uh, with pastels and charcoals and graphite, which we are blending. So it's going to cover what we don't and what we do see. So what I'm going to do... So I'm going to kind of start with the snout. And from the snout, I kind of work a little bit on the nose. Like I said, if it doesn't look great, it doesn't matter if it really looks great because right now we are here to just put in a rough reference because it you don't have to make it perfect. If you're trying to sit there and make it perfect just on the outline when you have other things to do, you need to learn how to time manage. Um, if you take college art classes, you don't have time to just sit down and just work 20 weeks into just one sketch, simple sketch. They're going to give you a week time limit. Um, they're going to tell you this is the homework assignment and, oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to fix the camera for you guys. It's a little bit lopsided there we go um so what they're going to tell you is here's your assignment you have a week to do it and you're probably going to be taking 20 to uh, not 20 but like you're probably going to be taking six around four to six classes which is which is cool but that's a lot of work to do and you're going to have to learn how to time manage so a great skill to have is to learn how to give a general, just a simple sketch, and then spend those actual 20 hours that you set aside to your um, filling in and your work on your value. That's the most important. What's going to help you is to make sure you're doing value. If you're doing line work like with a micron pen or something else, what you uh, you still need to have a general rough sketch to give you a little bit of an idea of what you want, ideally. So I'm going to kind of come here. This is the first part of the tongue. And what I'm doing when I'm sketching is I'm actually just looking at the image. I'm only looking at the image that I set aside because this is so important. When you're drawing from still life or even like if you go to the zoo and draw animals at the zoo, they are going to be constantly moving. So you want to always make sure that you are just staring at what you're looking at and you have the skill to just draw what you need to draw and just kind of quickly get something in because you're not going to have time. Things move sometimes if you're drawing at a cafe and you're trying to do studies on somebody. It's going to be constant. Like they're, they're going to be gone before you know it and then you're not going to have anything to quite reference on. So you want to try to be as quick as you possibly can. If you need to erase, you can, but like I said, you don't quite, you don't need to erase. Um, I don't like this, so um, I'm going to quickly exchange this to the actual shape that I'm looking for. And you're going to find things that you don't quite like. 
and you're going to see the difference and change in them and that's okay you don't have to start all over just kind of erase or even just draw right over it nothing to worry about there all right so i have a general sketch of it what i'm going to do here is place down what i'm doing is i'm just kind of placing down some fur like the outline of where the fur should end i'm going to scoot this up because uh my camera zooms in a little bit too much from what i like so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give a general uh outline of the eye Okay, so I have the general outline of the eye. I'm going to kind of fix it a little bit more. And then here, the eye is kind of more oval. There we go. And then um, I also like to draw on the pupil because it makes the outline a little more complete. Sometimes you definitely don't have to if you see the image. I put the reference on the google classroom page if you're looking at the google classroom page but um and then what i also do is i grab a ruler and um as you can see here i outlined a little bit of the eyes because you want to make sure that they line up around the same image you can see that the lines line up really nicely on the outline so i'm going to try my hardest to get the best um, the best line as possible. Now, I am bad at drawing lines, but this gives me a little bit of a guideline to kind of work with what I am um, doing, and I'll kind of lightly draw in. That's why it's so good to draw light. I'm not trying hard at all. Um, so it's really good to try your hardest to draw light because you can easily erase as well as just kind of like see where your um, where your lines are really going and if you don't like it or if it's totally wrong you have time to fix it and it's easier to fix than just drawing it in and seeing that you do not like it if it's not proportionally right and you see that it's not proportionally right you have the time to fix it ahead of time and then what i'm doing here is kind of creating a bigger eye the reason why this eye is bigger than this eye is because of what we call perspective now this eye is closer to the image or the camera or to the person itself so you just take the time to make sure that perspective is going to be correct and actually his, the black pupil of his eye kind of does more like this because of the reflection so I'm just kind of doodling that in just to get something in general so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to add his floof um I apologize for all the chirping and the noises I am at home I have family that is home so uh, we're just kind of working with it right now. Um, all right. So I'm getting this ear in now as well. And like I said, the ear is definitely all outline. I am not trying to perfect it right now. I'm just kind of giving something general. If I see hay that needs to be a little bit wider and taller, I'm going wider and taller. And then kind of coming over here giving a general thing it looks like it kind of comes out more like that and then um, his head just kind of does that now this ear is going to be a lot wider because of the perspective this ear kind of is facing towards the person while this ear is kind of coming a little bit more straight because of the angle that he is in and this is going to look really weird it's it it always seems to look really weird especially when you're just kind of getting an outline it might look cartoony it might not you know so it depends on how you draw and it's okay if you don't draw 
it perfect at first. It really isn't that big of a deal. So what I'm going to do is he has um, black, uh, black and white tufts. So he's uh, he's like a Oreo kind of. He can, he has just that white coming out and the black. So you just want to kind of make these markings so you know what's going to be black and what's going to be white, just to kind of give you an idea of where you are making his um making his hairline so that is what I am doing right now and he kind of has a little cheek so I'm kind of coming in with this little baby cheek and it comes down and then his like the whole back side of him is dark so I'm just kind of giving I don't know if you can see I'm sorry about the camera yeah, so um, I kind of am working with that and just kind of creating a little bit of a face. So what we are doing next, I am taking a soft chalk pastel. I like soft better because it's easier to blend. You get a hard, you're not blending that. Let me tell you, I tried and that is where I would get frustrated because it wasn't blending. It was very streaky. It's not fun to work with. So be sure to kind of, if you want to experiment, make sure to get a soft kind because what happens is you can blend it like a chalk pastel. And chalk pastels are very fun to blend. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of coming in to the darkness of the eye. I like working on the eyes first. I find them sometimes more fun or just maybe slightly easier at times to work on. Um, the reason why I personally do this is because um, I get overwhelmed when I draw, just like a lot of people probably do. So I kind of focus on one pinpoint. This is how you draw realistically. You can't look at the whole image and say, oh my gosh, I can't draw this. This is too hard. You have to start in sections. I do the eyes first and work outwards and just kind of deal with it that way. Because I find that to, the so much easier. So I'm coming in there. And then when you work with charcoal, make sure you blow. Don't erase with your hand. Because what will happen is it will smear. And you will not be able to fix it. It's annoying. So... You can, I mean, you could try to fix it, but it's most likely not working. And you just kind of want to, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm kind of erasing out because I made this eye a lot smaller than I intended to. And I'm actually kind of blending it because I'm going to make that dark, like uh, that anyways. So I'm shooting two birds with one stone at the second. If you did it right the first time. Bravo, great job. Um, the also, see how it just blend, like it blended effortlessly and I didn't have to do it and I barely just fixed it? That is what you want. That is the goal you need to get to. Um, so, there we go. I'm going to kind of just already just do the highlight right now to make my life a little bit easier. Taking needable eraser, making a highlight. Now what you can do, you can kind of do a little bit of a watercolor technique as well. And you could have just done, um, you could have just left it white in a certain spot and that would have been fine too. I'm just going to leave it like that. And what I'm going to do is, because I have time... I'm going to kind of switch it over here and then do this eye as well. I'm going to start on the pupil right here right now. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to kind of give an outline here. And come up with the outline here. And you really don't have to press too hard on your charcoal. Um, 
or you're just your pencils in general unless you're kind of working with a uh, a different pencil that just in you have like maybe one or two pencils and they're like two B's and they're like you don't have a range I could then it's like okay yeah try to press harder on it but with charcoals the great thing about them is you kind of just have to just lay the pigment down you don't have to press too hard you don't have to do very much with them So what I'm doing is I'm laying down this color very lightly. And also what I'm doing is I'm kind of coming here because it's a little bit darker here. And then I'm going to take a tortillon. I work with a lot of tortillons. Um, they're, a they're a lot thinner than blending stumps. I do blending stumps when I have to um, use a range of... When I have to do like a huge surface range, if I'm working on an 18 by 24, which is typically your standing standard drawing board size is what they require you in school for the most part. What happens is um, you have to use a bigger surface to blend. And this is actually a pretty small blending stump. They have really, really thick ones. What these are is just rolled paper and it helps blend so if you like I said if you don't have blending stumps q-tips work really good too as well as um, what's it's called a uh, tissue um, you can use a tissue in place of a chamois you can kind of roll it up however you feel like you need it that's how you're gonna get it And then I'm gonna kind of come in here to make it slightly lighter. I want to make this reflection nice. Er. Um, a hard eraser would be good too to kind of get more of a brightness, but um, I like to use Mutable Eraser to kind of get to a fine point. And I just keep working because it does build. Uh, it does kind of take away layers slightly, so you just have to work a little bit more with them. Okay, so what we are going to do is I'm going to take a tortillon. And I'm going to create the shadowing around with the fur uh, right next to the eyes. And what I'm doing is, um, kind of if you do a lot of painting and you have a grass, what I'm doing is I'm pressing hard, and when I drag, I lift up lightly. So, it creates... And I kind of do this in a fast, rapid motion. That's just how I personally work. And what I do is I kind of take it from where it is and I pull up just to kind of give a little um, fur texture and make it blend. And then if, oops, Athena. What a dork. What are you doing? Sorry. <laughs> My dog decided to come and <laughs> come and push in. Her let herself in, why don't ya? Alright, so that's that's basically what I'm doing and I kind of want my values to be dark and mixed. What you could also do if you like totally different contrast. Um you can even add a little bit of the darkness in you can either keep it like that or you could even blend it this is kind of a little bit more experimental what kind of style you guys would like to have okay so I I'm like I said I am working a full hour on this um so that way we can be able to get some things done and I'm gonna kind of try I'm gonna kind of experiment with this kind of make this darker what is wrong with you Jesus <laughs> stop opening and closing my door <laughs> it's not funny <laughs> sorry <laughs> so I'm just kind of um creating some value 
<laughs> so I'm just kind of creating value. I really like that. I think it's really cool. Um, when we're doing this, you guys just draw how you feel. Um, this is just, I mean, yeah, I'm teaching a little bit step-by-step step of how I do it, but everyone has a different artistic style, so really just don't be afraid to kind of work on it in your own style. You can also kind of just come up. I kind of went up a little bit, like, all the way to where the, uh, the dark hair is going to be. So that is what we are going to do. At least that's what I'm going to do. And um, I kind of like to blend it because it is lighter compared to uh, the rest of it because this is white fur. The reason why I'm adding a little bit, I'm not adding pure white to the paper because it's like I said, this isn't toned paper, this is white paper. So we have to still add a little bit of tonal value. And don't be afraid to kind of come in either like to the black. You can kind of tap it on your tortillon. And as you can see, the pigment gets darker. And that is kind of how you do like fur. It's really, really simplified and a lot easier than a lot of people think. I think it's like one of the easiest things on the planet kind of made his eyes a little bit darker compared to the reference but it's okay I am uh, it's kind of more if you're it's more uh if you're trying to do a pet portrait for somebody like somebody commissions you then you want to try to get the likeness as possible but what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing more of a study so we're kind of just working more on um the hair uh, so just so you know, this is the general shape of how an eye should look. So I'm just putting that shape in because in the actual eye, it kind of, it's got some dark mass, but it's also kind of fur. So like the white kind of covers, comes in and like comes in to cover it. So I am just kind of creating this fur mass where the value is a little bit darker. And same here, I'm just going to kind of keep doing that same fur consistency. You don't have to press hard with your tortillon. You just kind of, you can lightly do it. And, you know, like whatever you guys are more comfortable with practicing. That's why I say I always have a paper on the side. Because if you feel like, oh, I don't want to set it down and like put something down and try to correct it as I go. Always have a test sheet. Same with uh, painting in general. Always have like... A little test sheet if I pause guys I'm really trying to make sure that um, I am on time with what we are doing I'm trying to see what we worked on so we didn't really quite work on anything too much on this side of the eye besides trying to get that shadowing down of um, like the general shadowing here there we go so what I'm going to kind of work on next is we are going to kind of work on this snout um, I forgot to put the little holes in so I'm going to do that right now there's always something you kind of forget as you're doing a general sketch which is it, it isn't that big of a problem as you think it is. Alright, so then we have this nose here. Um, actually, now that I look at it, that's a little too high. Alright. And then it kind of curves in. So, I'm going to kind of pull up... Um, you can, you know, th there's also black chalk pastel. If you have pastels, you can use uh, pastel too. Um, also, another thing, you see how dull that is? If you absolutely have to, you can take a pencil sharpener. But the problem with that is um, it really dulls out the sharpener. And it doesn't give your sharpener long, 
long lasting life. What I personally prefer to do, and it's what I do with like a lot of my pencils, I'll give you kind of, I'll give you an example. Let me pull out my pencils. And this is kind of the old fashioned way to sharpen pencils. So if you have like a great grandma, or great grandpa, they'll probably, or even like maybe your grandparents too, they'll probably tell you this is how to sharpen a pencil. So how you do that, which is why I said if you have an X-Acto knife, you can use it in sandpaper. Um, you can use an X-Acto knife. Um, or if you can have your parents do it, what you do is you angle it very carefully and you chisel away the edges of it. And then what you also do, and they teach you this in college, is you can get a sandpaper or your drawing kits. If you had drawing kits, you can do this and you can kind of, uh, what you do is you like move it up and down, but at the same time, you roll it to the point that you need. For me... I could even, if I wanted to, just try to chisel and do it that way. I don't have time to sit down and do it, so I'm just going to um, quickly sharpen this real quick. I don't want to um, waste too much time. So let me... Alright, there we go. And you have to be very, very careful with your charcoals. It will get onto you in some shape or form which is why we have wipes and you use a wipe to make sure you clean your hands it's a little bit more simplistic than constantly getting up and down and if you don't have access to it that's why you kind of keep your wipes um so what i'm going to do is i'm gonna fill this in i'm trying to work as quickly as i can because um I have places I need to go just like everybody else and I kind of want to get everyone caught up with what we have today. And then this does kind of come up smaller but gets thicker down here. And also it's thick here and very, very dark. blowing my dust off and make sure after especially if you're working on something like the kitchen table be very careful i know your parents probably do not want you to make that much of a mess so be sure to very to keep it very very clean now when i'm i'm switching my pencils i'm using this carbon sketch pencil it has the exact pigment that i like and so i'm kind of coming in i'm not being very particular in how i'm feeling in my space the reason for this is because I, um, you're, I'm blending it anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't have to color it in pretty. Um, and I understand for people who are very much perfectionists, so let me 